and welcome to DIAC's Profiles and Identity Leadership. Today we're talking to Alan Foster, who is our DIAC Director and is Forgerox VP of Global Partner Success. Alan, and through his participation in Forgerox, provide leadership across the world and connect international insights um, and strategic opportunities to the DIAC Board and to our Canadian community at large. Thanks so much for joining us today, Alan. Thank you for having me. I want to ask you today, given your international strong expertise regarding digital identity, where do you see Canada as having an opportunity to take a leadership role? Well, thank you, Jenny. Um, absolutely. I mean, we are very involved in the DIAC for the reason that we see Canada as being a major leader within the space. The reason that we see that, and Fort Rock is active across the globe. We're very active in Europe. We're active in um, APJ, Australia, throughout the ASEAN countries. And one of the interesting things about it is that identity, when you start looking at it from a country's perspective, is hard. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of weird, interesting edge, edge cases Right? especially when you start dealing with citizenry and you start dealing with um, people who don't have access to technology and things like that. So there's a lot of really interesting problems when you come to identity, especially at a country level. And the thing that Canada brings to the table is my sort of personal slogan about Canada. It's small enough to be successful. Right. In, in general, Canada is looking at about 35 million identities across the country. And that's of a size that you can actually do a project and succeed. However, it's also complex enough to be interesting. In Canada, we have multiple provinces, we've got a federal government, we've got state governments, we have municipal governments, and each one of these bring additional complexities into the problem. And so the reality of it is that Canada is a microcosm for the entire planet, right? And if we tried to do this in the US, we would spend the next 20 years trying to get a committee together. And if we tried to do this in Norway, well, we did that already. <laughs> and so, you know, this is sort of the problem. The Canada is really the, the looking glass for the entire planet. And if we get it right in Canada, it means it's exactly the same challenge for the European Union, for the US, for Australia, for Asia. And that model can then scale up around the world. Recently, the government of Canada uh, ran a consultation for um, open banking to better understand the issues around open banking um, and how Canada would develop its strategy uh, for open banking. And Fordrock uh, was one of the key contributors to our diverse public-private response uh, to the open banking consultation. So. Um, could you tell us a little bit about why you see identity and open banking as being so interlocked or relevant to each other? Sure. And, and you've hit upon something that's near and dear to my heart, which is open banking. Right. So interestingly enough, what, what I see happening in the financial industry is that they are moving away from being service providers and moving to become almost common carriers. Right. And so what's actually happening here is that they have functioned for the last, I don't know, 400 years, knowing the identity of their customers and providing a full silo service provider to their customers. Right. And that's been very effective for banks around the world. What we're now seeing is with the digital age, banks are needing to change the way that they interact with their customers. In many cases, the services that they're offering people may not necessarily be to their customers. They may be offering, you might have a group of banks where one of them offers savings accounts to a certain group of customers and a different one offers credit information or credit cards to those same group of company, uh, customers. So therein lies the challenge, right? You can now see the problem where we've got multiple entities, often competing entities. These are entities who are in business, in the same business and competing with each other. However, suddenly they find out that in order to be successful, they have to be able to play nice with each other. And so in the high tech world, we've had this world called coopetition or frenemies, that's what's happening in the, in the banking sector, in the banking services. 
So in order to make that really successful, and with the rise of fintechs and much smaller companies who are providing very specific services to people regardless of the institution, the challenge that we now have to deal with is not just identity for a bank, but we have to be able to deal with identity so that all of these different entities can know that they're dealing with the same person and that the customer can know that they are actually recognized across all of these different entities. And so as I see open banking, which traditionally is there because customers are feeling locked into silos, as those silos begin to open up and the forward thinking banks see this as an opportunity, the underlying thing that has to be rock solid is identity. And so again, as we start looking at it within the dyad, a country or a national approach to identity that covers both government and public sector and financial services and others in the private sector and serves the needs of both is a wonderful foundation in order to build that up. Alan, I'd like to ask you, um, you are one of our DIAC directors. Um, you, uh, you've taken a leadership role in the organization. Um, what was it that drew you to participation in the DIAC and particularly leadership in the DIAC? And do you have any advice that you could share for any other um, organizations or people who are thinking about uh, participating? Wow, that's a tough question. And it, it's tough because it has so many different facets to it. Mm. On the one hand, it is a it is a personal journey for me. Wow. I enjoy involving with these kinds of organizations. And the DIAC is one of the organizations, but I'm also active in groups like Kentara and ID Pro, and I was in the IEEE. And so all of these are organizations that are further in scope than a single company. And even though I represent Ford Rock, we want to be able to impact a bigger community than just that of a, of a for-profit company. And I find that self-fulfilling. So I like to be involved in those. The second aspect is when we start looking at the DIAC, one of the reasons that I'm involved in the DIAC is it's unique. It's, first of all, we could look at it from a little bit of a mercenary perspective. It's our neighbor to the north. It's a great market for Fort Rock, and we absolutely need to be within the identity space in Canada. But more than that, the DIAC as an organization is unique because of both public and private sector involvement. It's unique because it is a community where everybody is working together. It's one of the strangest communities to me, and, and it's very, very Canadian. And, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, in as much as we have three or four banks, we have five or six different state governments, we have federal government, and everybody sits around the table and is very nice to each other. It's, it's the way that Canada is. And we have all of these different stakeholders coming in with the realization that their problem is not unique. Their problem is shared by everybody else within the country. And the benefit here is for the country to come up with a solution that works for everybody rather than uh, the more mercenary approach of a technology that works for a company and everybody else gets left in the dust. And sort of the third aspect that I sort of look into that is that it is important to be involved. I'm very lucky with Fordrock in that it supports me in terms of doing this. Fordrock sees it as an important aspect to be involved with the community at large. And my advice to anybody who wants to try and do this is that you cannot do it alone. You have to have the entity that you work for. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and sometimes it takes a lot of money for us to actually get involved. You need to have the entity that you work for, the entity that you represent, know what you're doing, be behind what you're doing, and sometimes, a lot of the time, benefit by what you're doing. There is no problem in getting exposure if you are doing valid work. And so very often, all of the folks who get involved in these kinds of organizations, it is a win-win situation, right? I'm not doing it just because I was, I was not busy that day. You know, yes, there's definitely a win in it for me. There's a win in it for Forge Rock, and there's a win in it for the community. And I think everybody goes into it with that win-win approach 
the community comes out as a winner. Well, thank you so much for answering uh, our questions today, Alan. Uh, thank you for your leadership in the organization. And uh, thanks for participating in our Profiles in Identity Leadership. You're more than welcome. Thank you for asking me, Jenny. Mm -hmm.